So this week I've been thinking a lot about um, communication, connection, relationship, and um, this time of coronavirus and social distancing and isolation. And I wanted to share a few of those thoughts with you today. I think one of the big things is I forgot how to communicate. I'm not sure if it's because of the Rona or if maybe it really starts before that. But this time in isolation has made me realize one of the things I want most, I forgot how to give, how to connect to. It's been a while and with lots of help that I've been working on the reality of having valued myself by my productivity. There would be waves of depression attached to times of inactivity or failed efforts because I had so closely tied my identity to productivity. Produce, make, be capable. These are the things that make you good, valuable, desirable, worthy. If you're not doing so, then you are not, pick your cliche, a productive member of society, a good mom, a hardworking employee, a competent pastor, a good wife, a valuable friend. But here's what's worse. In assigning this metric of value to myself, in making it my lens, I applied it to others. The vast majority of communication, if not all of it, has been goal-oriented, task-oriented, accomplishing something. Sure, the normal opening pleasantry is, so how are you, friend? Good to hear from you are followed quickly by, so there's this thing I'm working on, want to ask, want you to come to, etc. Communications that didn't yield action and information, I deemed pretty useless, a waste of time, mine and yours. Let's just get down to business people and stop wasting each other's time. So if there was not active exchange, there was no value. If there was no, I'm teaching you something or doing something for you or you for me, why were we even communicating? Efficiency is king. Check things off the list. Produce, make, achieve. But I sort of forgot or just deprioritized the value of connection, of relationship, of just checking in to hear your stories and share mine. By reducing myself merely to what I can offer, I often did so to others. And we might as well just be robots sharing code for our next function. Maybe that's the real danger versus any AI taking over. I had a thing to do, a job to accomplish, a task to complete, and well, like a ca good capitalist, that came first. When Rona pulled the rug out from under me, there was a shift. First, just the disorientation. What the heck is going on here? I have to stay in my house with my family? <laughs> I have to wear a mask? My favorite places are off limits to visit? Then a sort of malaise associated with the cumulative exhaustion. Yes, of this situation, but perhaps of a life of productivity as well. But there, there were, and there are, little gifts in it too. More opportunity to rest. More time with my family. More checking in with friends near and far with no agenda. And when I can set aside some familiar old shame that I'm not functioning at some ridiculous level I once called normal, there's relationship, connection, peace. Sabbath. These are good things, yes? For my friends that speak Bible, remember that whole, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy commandment. Or the part where it says to let the ground go fallow every few years. Or the part where the slaves were freed from the endless productivity of making bricks just to wander in the desert a while before finding a new way of life. Or the orientation, disorientation, and reorientation of the Psalms. All to say, yes, rest is part of it. 
the expectation of always producing, of always profiting, of always doing better today than you did yesterday, of each action building toward the next, it's a lie. It's not how the thing works. You are not valuable based on your productivity. I think this is a big part of what the Jesus story is all about. You are beloved, not because you are accomplished, not because you are religious, not because we are excelling in a worldly system of power and money, but because you are a beloved child of the divine. As you love your own children, or as you have been loved by earthly parents and friends, so you are loved by God, without agenda, without achievement, just because you are. And I believe our maker delights in watching us become and inviting us into an understanding of just how loved we are and in communicating through nature and through each other. So reach out to someone without a goal, without, I'm calling because, without agenda. Reach out. Check in, connect, because each of us has value beyond what we bring to the table. What might our new normal look like if it were based on that? Well, I hope that we can live into that, into more relationship, into our inherent value in each one, regardless of productivity or job title or religiosity or any of the rest. Peace be with you, friends.